Hi guys, it's Glenn. Today we're going to talk about cutting a positioning grid and threaded inserts into your spool board. This will help with aligning your work pieces and is a great way to mount your jigs and fixtures for production work. So let's get started. Although we offer to cut a grid and threaded inserts into the spool board as an option, I always recommend that you let your own machine cut its own grid. Because when we do this for you, we use a different machine to cut the grid and there's no way that it is perfectly lined up to your machine's travel. If you let the machine cut its own grid, it will always be perfectly aligned. Also, you will be putting the grid lines and threaded inserts into no mathematical locations, which will make it easier to create and set up any fixtures or jigs that you may find yourself using in the future. The spool board is larger than the work envelope of the machine, and the grid will allow you to see where the work envelope stops so that you will never accidentally mount your stock outside of this envelope. This project is done in two steps. The first step is to cut the grid. The second step will cut pockets for threaded inserts like this. For the grid, you can use a fine pointed engraving bit such as the 30 degree bit found in our starter tool set. But for this video, we're going to burn the grid with our new spindle mounted laser attachment. And then the second step is to cut the counterboard holes using an eighth inch fishtailed end mill, which is also found in our starter tool set. There's a file in the utilities folder inside of your NC files folder that will make this project easy. This file uses the power of Linux CNC's G-code interpreters, loops, and subroutines to create our grid parametrically, so that by changing a couple of variables at the top of the file, the file is adjusted to match your work envelope. I'll place a link in the description to download the latest copy of this file as well. This file combines the laser grid and the threaded insert pockets into a single file so that you can preview the threaded inserts overlaid onto the grid and confirm your program before running. The entire laser routine is stored in a subroutine and called by a line of G-code which has a block delete character at the front of it. You will run the laser grid, then it will stop on the M1 option stop. Then you run the threaded inserts routine by turning on block delete. Step one is to install the laser module. Now with our new spindle mounted laser option, this is real simple. You have a quarter inch mounting stud at the top of the module and you insert that into your quarter inch collet, clamp it down. and then take the pigtail and plug it in to the connector that's on the side of the gantry carriage. Okay, so next we need to home the machine and then run the program. Okay, let's launch one XC and C. Machine power. Home the machine. Okay, let's open our file. It's in the utilities folder called lasergrid.ngc. I've already confirmed that this one is set up for my Asteroid demo machine. Just double check to make sure all of my threaded insert holes line up with the grid the way I would like them to be. And then for the laser operation, we need to Make sure M1 option stop is turned on and that the block delete is turned off. Okay, now the software is loaded and we're ready to turn the laser power on. First, put your laser safety glasses on and then you can turn the key switch on and then turn the power button on. Make sure that both fans come on on both the laser power supply unit and on the laser module itself. And now we need to jog the machine. So you can either use the keyboard controls or if you have the jog pin it, you can use the jog pin it. We're gonna bring the Z axis down to where the laser module is about one eighth of an inch above the work surface. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, now let's go over back over to the software and we'll hit the laser test button and make sure that the laser comes on. Uh, in laser test mode, the power is limited to 10% of full laser power and that's really handy if you wanted to 
use the laser itself to find the origin of the part. Now we can hit the laser off and we're otherwise ready to roll. Okay, so let's hit the play button. Okay, great. Now that the laser grid is cut, we can install the tin mill and proceed with the next operation. First, we can uh, turn off the power to the laser and then turn off the key. Now that the laser is safe, we can safely remove our safety glasses. And then we need to jog the Z-axis up. And remove the laser module. We unplug it from the side of the gantry carriage, and then we can put that away. Next, grab the eighth inch mill and install it into the collet. All right, and jog that down to the top of the spool board. Okay. <clears throat> now, back over in the control software, we need to zero the Z origin. So hit the Z origin button right here. And then we need to turn on the block delete, which will skip all the laser functions in this program. Okay. Now, we can lift the Z-axis up, and we're ready to roll. Okay, now the only thing left to do is to install these studded inserts, and I'm just going to use a, a drill with a hex head in it to do that with the clutch turned on. So I hope you enjoyed this project and get the most out of your work holding and uh, work alignment. If you like this video, be sure and hit the like button, and if you want to see more of them, be sure and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to finish this project up here, and you guys have a good day.